Okay. Welcome. I love to see this group here. I mean, uh, here we are on a Thursday evening, the last day in February. Some of you may know it's leap year. What else are you going to do with an extra day of your life? But we're glad you chose to be with us today. We're going to take um, a little focus here on our panelists and uh, inspire you with some stories of success. And uh, hopefully you will be, be inspired and you will act as a connector with others in the community who you think might benefit by many of the resources that are with us tonight. So um, I'm Chris Cooney with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome you here. If you want to come closer, that's great. We've got a great program for you and we want to kind of get underway. Before I do that, um, I want to call your attention to a member of our armed services who is on leave and with us tonight. He came out special to be here with his mom, uh, Walter Medina. Walter, give her a wave. Let's have a round of applause. <laughs> Massachusetts National Guard, an active service the last few months. He's back here in the U.S. and he's with his mom tonight and we're glad that he's with us as well. So, Walter, thank you for your service. Um, so, it's my pleasure to welcome you here to our ninth annual multicultural business forum. And uh, for those of you who've been with us, you know that we've kind of turned the program upside down. We put our business people out in front talking about how they started their business and what resources they may have tapped. And that uh, is opposite of what we used to do, which is have everybody stand up here and say what they do for businesses and then try to figure out how to... So we've got both. We've got the, the resources here in the room and they're available to you, but we have great stories and I'm going to ask our panelists to kind of make your way up here. Tonight we celebrate business diversity, inclusion, and opportunity. Everyone in this room contributes to the strength of the Metro South region. It is our in individual experience, history, and perspective that combine with others to make the city and the region a vibrant community and really a center for the South Shore, the only city in Plymouth County. It is a place where our strength and competitive advantages relies on our differences, uh, not our similarities. By embracing and helping each other through programs like this one and others that you'll hear about tonight, we all benefit. We hope that you will have some time to visit with the many exhibitors in the room. Some of them are small businesses, some of them are small business resources, others are nonprofits that help people in need. Um, for example, we have business counseling services available through SCORE. Peter Smith is here with his team. Peter, thank you very much. We have the U.S. Small Business Administration. Uh, Bob Nelson's here. Give him a round of applause. You're going to hear from him in a moment. We have a access to capital, working capital loans at all levels, a C Corporation and several local banks, including our sponsor, Northeastern Savings Bank. And the president is here. We're going to hear from him a little bit. There are also small business funds through the Massachusetts Growth Capital uh, Corporation and NeighborWorks. Trish White, who's a consultant many of you have met, uh, is available to talk to you about accessing those funds. Uh, the state certif certification is also offered for women, minority, and veteran-owned businesses, and we're delighted to have John Fitzpatrick with us uh, from the state office. John, thank you for being here tonight. Finally, we have a strategic business, small business uh, uh, assistance initiative supported by the United States Small Business Administration, and we're delighted to have uh, Bob Nelson with us, and we're going to hear from him soon. In addition to resource partners, we also have several community partners in the room tonight. These partners include the Brockton Area Transit Authority, and I saw the administrators here as board member of the chamber, uh, Mike Lambert. Mike, thank you, and your team. The South Shore Business Network, who I met uh, the representative here on the right. Nice to see you. And uh, the Mass Higher Greater Brockton Workforce Board, and many more, and uh, they're here with us as well. We would like to thank our premier sponsor this evening's program. Please join me in a big round of applause for Northeastern Savings Bank, who's picking up the tab tonight, so thank you. Um, in addition, we have some elected and appointed officials with us today. Please give us a wave as I announce your name. Shirley Asak, Brockton City Councilor. Shirley, good to see you. Rita Mendez, Massachusetts State Representative and Attorney here in the city. Rita. We have Michelle Dubois, who is also a state representative and represents Brockton and Toronto, she's here. And Jimmy Valentine, representing Senator Brady's office. Hey, Jimmy. 
and let me know if I missed you and we'll work you into the program later on. It is now my pleasure to welcome our MC for tonight's program. Please welcome Sue Joss, CEO of the Rockton Neighborhood Health Center. Sue. Thanks, Chris, and welcome everyone. It's great to see such a big crowd for this event. Um, I also, in addition to recognizing Leap Day, um, I think it's important to um, recognize that this event is being held on the last day of um, African History Month, so um, well-timed, and, and thank you for that. Um, so the Metro South region of Massachusetts, which is centered in Brockton, is one of the most diverse regions in New England. This is a tremendous advantage, aiding in the development of our community. Our diverse, inclusive business climate creates a competitive advantage, both locally and beyond. As many of you know, the Metro South Chamber strives to cultivate diverse leadership, facilitate minority business growth, and engage with diverse people to create positive community impact. Tonight, we're celebrating nine years of this multicultural business forum, as Chris mentioned. We'll hear from several small business owners who have embraced their dreams, gained experience, refined their skills, and achieved success. It's important to know as we hear their stories to be reminded they often learn from others, receive support from others, and gain experience from others along the way. You'll likely hear from them they did not do it alone. Through business assistance resources, some of which Chris just mentioned, various organizations, mentors, and networks, they benefited, and these same resources are also available to you. We hope you'll be inspired and take advantage of these resources as well as share your knowledge of them with others who'd like to open or strengthen a small business. Before we introduce our panelists, I'd like to introduce a very important member of our small business community to say a few words. He is the United States Small Business Administration's Massachusetts District Director. It's an honor to have him here with us as the SBA has done so much under his leadership to help small businesses from throughout our region get through the pandemic and beyond. Please help me in welcoming Massachusetts District Director of the U.S. Small Businesses Administration, Bob Nelson, to say a few words. Bob. Well, hello everyone. It's great to be back here for another multicultural event that uh, Chris and the Chamber is putting on. I think I've been maybe close to all of them. I uh, might have missed one along the way, but it's, it's just wonderful to be here. And I absolutely applaud the Chamber for what it does to support diverse communities and, and what you're doing here. Uh, just look around the room with the businesses that are here, the folks that are here. I, I just can't applaud you enough. Uh, so as, as far as the SBA, I just want to uh, share a little bit about what we've been seeing in some of the things that we've been doing that I think would be of interest to the small businesses, but certainly to the resources who are here in the room. But I do want to point out my colleague who's here. Uh, she Shelly Gillis is our new outreach and marketing specialist who is overseeing uh, Southeastern Mass and the Cape and the Islands. So definitely get to know Shelly. Uh, but as far as the SBA, the, the tagline that we use is we power the American dream. And I've been with the SBA for 25 years. I've seen it every day almost as far as businesses who have started in their basement, started in their garage, started at their kitchen table, who have then grown on to be hugely successful businesses, providing with the, for their families, building vibrant communities. This is what the SBA is all about and what all of our collective programs are all about. But what I want you to know is if you think of what is happening across the United States, there has been, in the past fiscal year alone, 5.5 million small business startup applications nationwide. All-time record in a year. And I can tell you that under the Biden-Harris administration, there has been a huge, that the, the five and a half million has translated into, uh, I think it's uh, 16 million small businesses who have submitted startup applications under the Biden-Harris administration. So certainly there is a lot of good news, but when you look at the businesses who are driving this startup growth, it is our black and brown 
owned small businesses. It is our women owned small businesses. This, this is what is happening. This is a transformation that is happening not only here in Massachusetts, but happening across the United States as far as the diversity of small businesses who are powering our economies and, and again, powering the American dream. But um, what I, I, I'm just going to share a couple stats with you because I think it's important to know. So black businesses, their ownership is growing at the fastest pace in 30 years. And the share of black households owning a business has more than doubled from 5% to 11%. This, this is huge. Uh, that's from 2019 to 2022. Latino business ownership is growing at the fastest pace in at least the last decade, rising from 7% to 10% between 2019 and uh, 2022. But the other thing that is happening, which uh, is on the innovation side, when you think of the SBA nationwide and everything is happening with the technology improvements and AI and all this innovation that is happening, this is certainly an area where the SBA is helping to support these innovative small businesses with these emerging technologies that are going to make life easier and better for all of us. So it, it really is transformational as far as what is happening over, and it's happening quickly when you look at what has happened over the past couple of years since we've come out of uh, COVID. But I'm glad that you mentioned Black History Month uh, because this is something, we had a wonderful event, uh, a capital matchmaker to support support black owned small businesses in Roxbury last week. About 200 small businesses showed up in the room uh, uh, to connect for capital. But on the, on the SBA loan side, what I can tell you is that uh, we basically doubled the lending to black owned small businesses nationwide. And uh, the, the number is that uh, in fiscal year 23, the SBA backed nearly $1.5 billion in lending to black-owned businesses. Again, it was almost double. We saw the same trend here in Massachusetts where from fiscal year 22 to 23, we also almost doubled. And we, But I, I'm, I'm not uh, going to be shy about this. There are still absolutely gaps and challenges. It, it, we are not where we need to be with lending to certain demographics. And I can tell you that my team and uh, all of our partners, we're, uh, we're working it very hard to try to make sure that there's access and app opportunity for everyone. But I, I want to just quickly tell you about what the SBA does. So when you think of SBA, think of, uh, of the three C's, counseling and technical assistance. You know, if a, a capital is, is extremely important, that's the fuel. But if you don't have the knowledge and skills in order to run a small business, if going to fail. And I was talking with uh, one of the uh, uh, folks running one of the tables here, and she was telling me how she got into business and then all of a sudden was in panic mode. That, oh my God, I'm in business now. I need to get with SCORE. And SCORE worked with her over a, a number of months in order for that business to get on solid footing. And since uh, I'm not sure what the time period, but she's more than doubled her revenues. And that's because of the assistance that is provided through SCORE. And I, it, they do a lot of virtual, they have mentors across the entire country. They try to connect uh, businesses with the industry where they, are, they need that help and that guidance in that specific industry. So again, don't forget about the resources, but government contracting is another huge area. And I'm gonna save capital for last, which I think is what uh, is of most interest to small businesses. But government contracting, the SBA, we're here to make sure that small businesses get their fair share of government contracts, but there is a lot of good news in lending to, uh, in government contracting and buying from diverse owned small businesses. You know, some of the stats from fiscal year 22, black owned businesses received nine and a half billion dollars in government contracts uh, from the federal government, uh, an increase of 490 million from the previous year. Uh, Hispanic owned small businesses, $10.6 billion. These are Bs with billion, uh, a $330 million increase from the previous year. I think you get the, the message as far as what's happening. We've doubled uh, the, the goal for uh, contracting to small businesses and a lot of work is out there to try to uh, get small businesses that want to do business with the federal government 
we need new small businesses to come in and to become part of our portfolio. All certifications are under the SBA, which, whether it's a women-owned small business, a veteran-owned small business, service-disabled, and also our uh, small disadvantaged business, our 8A and our hub zone certifications. But, but I'm going to talk about capital just quickly because I know I don't have a lot of time because I want you to know what's happening on the loan side with SBA. There's a lot of new noise on the economy. If you think of the past year, you know, rising interest rates, inflation concerns, uh, trying to find employees, those challenges, supply chain issues, just a lot of concerns and noise that's happening in the, in the background. And when there's concerns about the economy, this is when SBA actually gets very busy because we don't lend the money directly. What we do is we provide a guarantee to the lender in order to reduce their risk so that they'll lend to small businesses. Pretty simple. And what I can tell you is that with the help of the SBA guarantee, our 7A guarantee program, we're up uh, again this year over last year. I'm out beating uh, the bushes, trying to talk with lenders, get them interested in uh, the changes that we made to make SBA's loan programs simpler for the banks, simpler for the small businesses, less costly for the banks, and less costly for the small businesses. So when you put that all together, it's translating and it will translate into more dollars for small businesses because you need the capital in order to grow and expand. When I do these events and I talk to audiences and I ask, who, who's in the room that just has an idea that wants to start a business? There, there's always a couple hands that go up, but the, the majority of the businesses that are coming to these events are existing businesses who are looking for the growth and expansion capital so that they can take their business to the next level. So I'm, I'm glad that we have some banks here, and, uh, but as far as uh, SBA, you, you have our commitment and uh, we are absolutely helping uh, to get a lot of capital into the hands of small businesses because the, without the SBA, these loans wouldn't be possible. The banks certified that it's only because of the, of the need for government support that they come to us for our guarantee. So lots of changes on the SBA loan side. I, I'm not going to bore you with all those details, but I, I did want to just quickly mention lender match. So the, I, I'm always suggesting that businesses work with their local, local lenders and to build those relationships. But if you don't know where to go for a loan, if you are unsure, one of the things that you might want to try is SBA's lender match tool. It's sba.gov slash lender match. You answer under 20 questions. What type of business are you? What industry? How much money you need? What's the money for? And those leads go out to our lenders who are registered for Lender Match. So if there are lenders here who are not registered for Lender Match, you're missing out on some free leads. So get with us so that we can get you registered in Lender Match. A new version has just been announced. We keep making this better and better as far as the enhancements and the way that lenders can filter it so that they're just getting leads on the market area and the types of businesses that they're looking for. But it is absolutely turning into real deals and, transa and transactions. I, I, just very quickly, because this is important, I'm not sure if there are businesses in the room who got PPP loans or economic injury loans. We're up against a deadline where if you haven't applied for forgiveness, the loan might be charged off at the bank. All loans, even those under $100,000, are going to be referred to Treasury starting on March 4th. So it's really important for any businesses out there who haven't submitted their PPP forgiveness application to get it in as soon as possible, especially on these small loans. It's very easy, simple. You don't need a lot of documentation. Typically, you're just plugging in a couple answers. Uh, to the questions and it's forgiven. And then it turns into a grant with no obligation on your part. The last thing I'll mention is a new program that uh, we're launching. It's called Emerging Leaders Thrive. We've been doing this for 15 years, but uh, we're soliciting expressions of interest from small businesses who want to grow their business. What we say, so think of it, uh, we use the word, are you hungry? 
Do you want this? Are you angry that you're not where you want to be? And one of my colleagues has coined the term hangry. So we're looking for hangry businesses, businesses that really want to get to the next level to grow their business. It's a free program. All it is is a time commitment on your side, 250,000 in revenues or less, at least one employee. Uh, and you can potentially get into this program. I can tell you that, that the businesses that are Thrive graduates, growing revenues, getting government contracts, all the things that a business would want in order to grow and expand and uh, to support yourselves and your family. So uh, Shelly has a one-page flyer on the table, so if this program sounds like it might be of interest to you, get your expression of interest into us. We have 25 slots for uh, east of Boston. Uh, the, there'll be in eight in-person classes up in Boston, uh, which is not a heavy lift. So certainly businesses down here can take advantage of this program. But with that, let me, let me stop. And, but uh, again, congratulations to all of the businesses who are here. This is what this program is all about. It's all about you and about diverse communities. So again, uh, I applaud all of you and appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. That was a, a lot of great information, really. I'm sure a lot of, a lot of people have taken copious <laughs> notes, right? <laughs> so uh, tonight's business panel is sponsored by Northeastern Savings Bank. Um, Northeastern Savings Bank's mission was built on the simple idea of local people and their businesses are best served by a local bank with local interests at heart. Northeastern Savings Bank is a true community bank, which Chris and I are on the board of. Um, <laughs> So, um, but, so we know firsthand what a great bank it is with both personal and business services. Whether looking for a first mortgage, starting a business, or saving for the future, personal service from a financially focused team is what Northeastern Savings Bank is all about. Since 1864, when the bank opened its first branch in Easton, they have remained a community-minded mutual bank with a big heart and a commitment to lending within the diverse com community of the Metro South region. Please join me in welcoming Rich Spencer, President and CEO of Northeastern Savings Bank. Oh, fantastic, thank you. Uh, you know, I think next year I have to ask Chris if we can go uh, before the SBA, because uh, I, 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 definitely, I definitely can't compete with that. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, thank you to Chris and, and his team. Uh, putting a, an amazing event together. Um, we're very honored to obviously sponsor this event. Um, I think uh, the chamber basically sells out every event now. I think that's what you do. Um, but really, that, that's really contributable to all of you folks that are in the room today. Um, you know, what makes a really strong, vibrant community is, is really having all the faces that we see in the crowd today working together and making a stronger community, uh, being able to share ideas, um, you know, this event here is just tremendous. I mean, you have folks up here each and every year. This year is no different, sharing experiences with one another, how they became successful, the pitfalls, the struggles, the things that folks have to go through, uh, SBA on how you get financing, whether it's our bank, any other bank that you're working with, how do you get moving and what do you do? And we are so fortunate, really, as a, as a community player, um, when we sponsor events and things like this, we really view ourselves, and I think this is true to everybody who sponsors any one of these events at the Chamber, it really comes down to we want to be a catalyst, and a catalyst to see our communities, see Brockton and the other surrounding communities thrive in what we do. And that only happens through small business. Our small business, your small business, sharing those ideas and doing things together. So again, many, many thanks for welcoming us to allow us to sponsor this event, take advantage of it, talk to each other, work with each other. So many tremendous resources, and I'm really excited to hear the panelists tonight and, and move forward. You do not want to listen to me much more. So thank you so much, and I very much appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. All right, now, um, now it's my pleasure to introduce our business panel who will briefly share their interesting inspirational business stories. 
Um, so I'd like to welcome Mary Jane Anen of Combined Insurance, um, David Offit, Home Vesters of America, and Dr. Coombs of Medela, Medela Dental. So welcome to each of you. Um, first on the panel to tell her story <laughs> is Mary Jane Anen, franchise owner of Combined Insurance. Mary Jane is originally from Nigeria, a mother of two, and married to Christopher Anen. She holds degrees in business, Christian leadership studies, and Christian counseling. Mary Jane is the former chief executive officer of Macmar Construction Company in Lisbon, Portugal, where she lived for 17 years. With more than 13 years experience, she currently works as a senior account executive with Combined Insurance, a global provider of accident, life, and critical care insurance coverage. She has recently sent sites on establishing her own independent contractor business, representing Combined Insurance within the Metro South region. So welcome, Mary. Yeah. Thank you so Mary Jane. Am I, am I passing this along? OK. okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, I so appreciate for this opportunity. As you said, uh, my name is Mary Jane Anen, originally from Nigeria. And uh, the life of my story, I was really built up, called from the beginning of my life into business. My mother was a businesswoman, so she was able to grow me into business. So even during my school careers, I still involved myself in different businesses in Nigeria before I traveled to Portugal. And getting to Portugal, uh, I was able to to survey what is going on in the country because you need to know what is going around you. So I found out that construction business is the one booming. So as a woman, everybody was like, how is she going to do construction? But I picked up courage to jump into it. And I, I, I was able to establish a company called MacMay Construction Company. And uh, uh, after 10 years, I have like 50 employees and three engineers. It was a really successful business. So uh, jumping into America, and I was able to uh, get into insurance business. And uh, it has been so wonderful, the insurance business. Because you need to insure people. We protect people from the time when things are good, things may turn around, you still have opportunity to do your business. So. So I have a, a master's degree in Christian counseling and a first degree in uh, business. So, and I'm a senior pastor of uh, the church, Throne of Grace Ministry. You might be wondering how she's doing it all, but <laughs> it's all about uh, planning yourself and establishing yourself. But for now, I'm a senior account executive with uh, uh, combined insurance. So, uh, it has been awesome for 13 years doing that business. So I will be available to answer your questions when the time comes. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Jane. And I would also say that we're thrilled to have Mary Jane as one of our most recent board members at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. So mm -hmm. thank you. Next, we have David Offit, co-owner of Home Vesters, We Buy Ugly Houses franchise. Home Vesters, or We Buy Ugly Houses, is owned by David and, and Dietra Offit. The franchise helps homeowners escape ugly real estate situations. It's located on Oak Street in Brockton. Prior to purchasing the franchise six years ago, David and Dietra opened a Century 21 franchise, also operated here in the city of Brockton. With close to 30 years of experience in the real estate business, one of their goals has been to consistently give back in terms of their time and financial resources to the underserved. David currently sits on the board of director, directors for the Old Colony YMCA um, and serves on the board of Signature Hospital. David resides in Brockton with his beautiful wife, partner Dietra, and their children. They are the proud parents of four amazing sons ranging in age from 24 to 43. In their spare time, they enjoy working out at the Y, playing handball, hiking, and traveling with their family. Welcome, David. Good evening. Uh, I tell you, it just puts a smile on my heart when I think about the four boys and my wife, but I won't talk to you much about them. Uh, I'll say this. Uh, when I was in high school, 
if you look at my yearbook, it says, my desire is to be a successful businessman. Now, I've been a strong believer in if you put it out in the universe, it's going to come back to you. Now, it's taken several different ventures to get us to a place where we can say that we have some success. Uh, but as you know, success is something that's a moving target. When we had our Century 21 franchise, we were up to 40 or so agents, and I tell you, that was some of the hardest work that I've ever done, uh, and not as gratifying as you would think. But when I bought the Home Vessel franchise, my wife and I found that that was more of a, a ministry uh, than it is a business. So when you sit at somebody's kitchen table and they're going through a difficult time, because not every client is my client, uh, and they're going through a difficult time, be it fire, be it water damage, whatever it may be, and you're able to give them a solution, an honest, fair solution, where they win and we win and the community wins, because that's the goal, is to be the partner to the community, so that we don't have properties that are uh, less than the neighbor's property. We don't want properties ported up. We want properties that look good. And we want families to be able to smile when they walk into their home. So when we buy a property and we rehab that property and bring it back to life, we take photos or video, we send it back to the previous owner. And never have I not got a response from them of gratitude and appreciation. So that makes a difference. Not only that, but we're able to provide a service to the, the new homeowner where they can buy it at a price that makes sense. When I look across the room here today, when we're thinking about giving back, I, I sit on the board with, with Rich Spencer at the, the YMCA. and uh, It's not easy to be a small business owner. It's not, they said I only got 10 minutes, but I don't think they'll mind if I take 20. Just, 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 uh, but I'll say this to you. Uh, prior to us getting a little taste of success, I'm sitting in a board meeting, and to my left was a gentleman by the name of Dan Trout. Uh, Dan happens to be a banker. Now, I'm in a board meeting giving back. At that point, I was not bankable. But Dan walked me through that process of becoming bankable. So giving back, I also received, which is good. Dan and I sat down and looked at my uh, financial statement and net worth statement a couple days ago, and, and I wasn't too excited about it, but he said to me with such encouraging words, this looks good, you did good, this is a lot better than I thought. That made me feel better, so when I went and talked to my wife, what I'm saying to you is this, uh, being a small business owner, you've got your peaks and your valleys. Uh, you're not gonna have all good days. But when you have those good days, make certain that you're putting money in a reserve for the challenging days, you see? Uh, I was talking to Larry, who's uh, opening, he opened his own small business, and I said to him, uh, when, when you're challenged, you've gotta learn to look within and find that strength to press on, you see? Every small business owner should have a coach. Every business owner should have a coach. I've had a coach from day one. And that coach walks me through. I, I brought my little notebook for my coach notes. He brought me through good times, bad times, and he tells me what's real. So I can't be confused about it. If I should, I'll, I'll share this quick story with you, then I'll, I'll pass to Michael. I called my coach up and I said to him, this is when I owned an exit realty franchise some time back before the market tanked. I called him up and I said, Bob, listen, uh, you'll never believe what I did. He says, what? I says, I bought a second franchise. You know what my coach said to me? And to me, I was excited about it. It was the right thing to do, I thought. He says, David, right idea for bad time. See, that's why you need a coach in your business, because you're flying high, things are going well, and you make decisions. And I learned that you never make a long-term decision when going through short-term pain. You see, the space I was in was a little tight. The agents wanted more space. The money was flowing okay. So I made a long-term decision and committed to a second franchise when going through that short-term pain. Another long-term decision could be selling a property that you have when you don't really need to because you're going through short-term cash flow issues. So the long and the short of it is be focused if you decide to open a small business or if you currently own one. Be motivated to get up every day and do what's necessary to be be committed to your business, and make certain that you control your time. That's critically important. Time you don't get back. If you can control your time in the mornings, I think it was the owner of Tesla, I won't say it exactly what he said, but he said get up at 4.30 in the morning, get the stuff done that you don't like doing, and then the rest of the day is yours. That's how I live my life. 
I really do. I get up at that time in the morning, I get it done, and then I keep it moving. So if you own a small business, stay focused. Get a coach. Uh, and do some good reading. The book that I'm, I'm reading right now, and really, Chris, I'm done after this. The book that I'm reading now, again, and this is like the fourth or fifth read over the past couple of years, is Who Moved My Cheese? Because we're in a market right now where we're faced with challenges. And anybody that read that book, and I think every small business owner should, if you haven't, you definitely should buy it. Uh, Snip and Scurry and Him and Ha, that's what it talks about. You don't want to be Him and Ha. You want to be Snip and Scurry. You want to go ahead and, and move when it's necessary to move. Change, be diverse. Uh, so I'll, I'll end with that, but I'm happy to answer any questions should anybody have some questions later. Thanks, David, that was great. The stories are so inspiring, and our final speaker today is Dr. Sabrina Coombs, co-owner and founder of Medela Dental. Medela Dental is owned by Dr. Sabrina Coombs and Dr. Stephanie Sadler. They opened their dental practice in Brockton in 2021 and practiced preventive care across a whole range of general and cosmetic treatments. Their practice is located at 1020, 1034 North Main Street in Brockton. Dr. Sabrina Coombs grew up on the beautiful island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. She graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Biology from Bethune-Cookman University in 2007. After graduation, she worked as a middle and high school science teacher while conducting biomedical science research at the University of Central Florida. Dr. Coombs later graduated summa cum laude from Barry University with her Master's in bi Biomedical Science in 2011 and then Tufts University School of Dental Medicine in 2015. Following graduation, she continues to practice dentistry in Massachusetts. Dr. Coombs believes dentistry gives her the opportunity to creatively pursue her passion of service to the underrepresented communities through her daily work. Her experience as a full-time teacher working with middle and high school age students in high need, high risk schools further exposed her to the challenges of helping individuals who need extra attention and patience. Ultimately, these experiences provided her with the opportunity to connect with people of all ages and backgrounds. She has carried these skills with her as they have positively shaped her approach to providing exceptional dental care. Welcome, Dr. Coombs. inspired hearing David speak. <laughs> um, thank you for the introduction and Dr. Sadler, my partner, we met at Tufts University. And starting off at Bethune Cookman, our motto was enter to learn, depart to serve. And my inspiration each day is to get up and want to make a change in the life of anyone that I interact with. I didn't think I would be a business owner. I wanted to be a dentist, I wanted to serve the community. But the idea of opening your own office and then deciding to open during COVID was very risky. And I'm very thankful for Eastern Bank and the SBA because we did not think it would happen. We were able to still get a loan even though most of the banks stopped giving loans to first time business owners. Dr. Sam and I were, we, if you've seen our commercial, we appeared with Dan and he walked us through the process. We thought it would be about three months. It ended up being about nine to 11 months, and it was an adventure. But with all of that, I want to remind people that no one said it was gonna be easy. We get up every day and we choose what decisions that we make. A lot of times it's difficult, your body hurts, but you have to remember why you're doing it. And one moment. <laughs> yes, and my, I want everyone to remember to start now. I look back five years ago or 10 years ago when I felt like I was ready and I was afraid. But the sooner you start, the longer you get to enjoy whatever your passion is. And I think it was about six months ago, my back was hurting. I'm like, why did I do this? Dentistry is already so hard. <laughs> and I had a young patient come in, I'm like, this is why I do it. Someone looked in and they said, wow, there's a young black dentist. And they've never met someone like me. And we have the opportunity to walk through life and our presence actually inspire other people. 
the conversations that we choose to have with patients also inspire them as well. And I am humbled to be here with every one of you, and I'm open to answering any of your questions as well. Thank you, Dr. Coombs, and I hope all of you were as inspired as I was by these three amazing stories, and um, really shows us what it's possible to do. So thank you. Um, so I hope you all feel better prepared to seek or share support for small businesses. This is a room of small business people and resources for them. We hope you will make the most of this evening by talking with others to strengthen your knowledge and understanding. We look forward to working with you and assisting your business soon. Please stick around for some great networking to say hello to someone new. You never know what each interaction will bring in terms of new business and opportunities. We'll have more delicious hors d'oeuvres from Tim Thorny Lee and for dessert, delicious cake made by Montilio's Baking Company here in Brockton. Um, next, I would have done the um, drawings, but they need to magically appear. Oh, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and if you are a winner, please see Naldo. So the first door prize is a profile in the action report plus a $25 gift card. And that goes to Patricia Belfield of Belfield Consulting. The second, a $25 American Express gift card, Sedalia Rodriguez, Brockton Area Transit. And the third um, door prize, another $25 American Express gift card, Liberia, Liberia Brito of We Care 365. After me? All right. I still have pages for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so for next is thank yous. I want to thank um, everyone who's helped me this event possible. So first, our premier sponsor, Northeastern Savings Bank. Rich Spen Spencer, Dan Trout, and Jeff Ternell are here. Um, our business panelists, SBA Director of Massachusetts, Bob Nelson. All of our partners and exhibitors tonight. Rich Morgan of Rich Morgan Photography. Brockton Community Access, the Enterprise Newspaper. Our Chamber Ambassadors. And thank you all again for attending. Um, just a reminder, please save the date for Good Day Metro South featuring Secretary Yvonne Howe from the Mass Office of Economic Development. That'll be on March 28th from 12 to 1.45 at Concord Foods, 10 Minute Man Way in Brockton. Please register today as you don't want to miss this program. It's sure to sell out soon. This concludes the business panel portion of the program, except for whatever Chris wants to say. So <laughs> please enjoy um, strengthening your networking and um, the result of professional strength in our region. So thank you. Thank you. So let's have a round of applause for Sue Jones. I also want to uh, call out Naldo Cardozo, who you, many of you got to know, right? He graduated from Brockman High School. He also graduated from UMass Dartmouth with uh, three degrees, Portuguese finance and economics, and uh, he was with us for six months, but he just accepted a big job in Boston, so he's going to be leaving. But let's have a round of applause for Naldo. <laughs> he put this all together. We'll be hiring to replace him shortly. And I also want to acknowledge Emma Stratton, who's, uh, Donaldi, who's also here with us and uh, has done a lot of the marketing around this event. So thank you. Emma.